Um, so if everybody's ready on the count of three, you should know what we're going to do. One, two, three. Hello, Nancy. Let me know if you need a timestamp. I kind of agree with Joel. I, I don't think Ethan is an advanced child. Oh. 
So we're at four minutes and 48 seconds. So you want to add 20 seconds to that? They're arguing in the diner right now. Mids and Joel. About Ethan and Queens and everything. They just left the diner. I love this transition from past to almost present and back to past. It was unique. Jackie. Yeah, this is his last episode, unfortunately. Because Brian passed away shortly after he filmed this. Oh, they mention Washington Square Park. Yeah, and I feel sorry for those birds. They're not city birds. They're going to die. I really like the name of Joel's club, the Button Club. It's so cute. Kind of appropriate, too, because weren't they into tailor tailoring and making clothes? And yes. Buttons? And if you notice on the little shelves in the background on the walls, there's boxes of buttons sitting around.
I did update the timestamp in the app, guys. Goats, Diane, your goats. Very awkward.
but that's one of my favorite parts of this episode. I love me. Midge is going to save the day. Of course, there's a empty mic and a stage. She can't help herself. Timestamp is seventeen nineteen. Mid is on the stage. I love when they're in the garment district. It's so pretty and like busy. I love it. Very interesting hat she's wearing. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this hat.
My other character that I like. Oh, well, I love Benjamin. But I love him because of who plays him. So I always like seeing him. I think that would be awkward to call your ex fiance's mother to get match made.
I realized where I recognize this song from. This was a very pivotal scene in Sense8 that played this song.
can totally on Benjamin's side right there. <laughs>
Those date bars look really good. They're like homemade Fig Newtons. I want them. I love those flowers by the Fig Newton-like things because they're like fire and ice roses, you know, with the white with the colored tips. Oh, yes. When we had them in the florist that I worked at, they went so quickly. They were very popular. I like Wanda Sykes. Is this Wanda Sykes? I believe so. And she portrays moms pretty well. Kim said it is Wanda.
burning down the house.
And there's the end of her tour. What did everybody think of that ending? The couch is still open if anybody wants to come up and talk. Sorry, I had to go over and make sure I remembered to harvest because last night when we watched this, I completely lost track of myself and did not harvest. Always happens to me. I so like Diana, this episode. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead and comment because uh, I, was... I was just going to say I like this episode a lot. I think it's a great finale. It's a very sad ending. It's sad, but it's like so sets. It's like such a cliffhanger, you know. So it really yeah. sets things up. I really like that. It definitely lets you uh, anticipate what's coming in season four. Like it's been a long time since that first aired this series season finale, and it's crazy that we waited this long, and we're gonna get to see what happens post this episode. Yes, we will get to see those of us that waited get to see the next episode tonight. Yeah, I didn't wait. I watched both episodes. Me too. So. My mother is a bad influence <laughs> on me. My mother is a very bad influence on me. She was like, do we really have to wait till tomorrow? She's like a big binger. So she's like, um, I don't know if I can wait. She, like she was gonna watch it if I went after I went to bed. If I didn't, so Diane, I heard you. I uh, Diana, you. I heard you went on a rabbit hole last night regarding those tap dancers. Yeah, so I'm a tap dancer. I've always been a tap dancer, and I, um, I, you know, it's funny. Like I, I learned tap dancing from you know like like anyone would in any dance studio like a very broadway style of tap dancing and so when i was in high school i actually got had a teacher who was more of a rhythm tap dancer and then i don't know if anyone remembers who's my my age ish um there was a broadway show called bring in the noise bring in the funk um that was kind of a sensation and it told the story of tap through the show and it was really amazing and it showed the evolution of tap dance as a black art a slave art actually and it really changed my perspective on tap dancing and like what we were doing and how you know um the tap dance I had learned my whole life was kind of cultural appropriation in a way, in a way the way it like was the way the evolution um, goes. And so in that show, there is a number called Grin and Flash and it's all, it, it appears in the show in a, in a time where um, the narrators are telling you that like tap dance had evolved into this sort of very flashy um, art form. And, the show is taking a, a a bit of a dig at the Nicholas brothers because it's saying like these two were part of an evolution of tap dance that was like black men performing for white audiences, like that type of thing. So I had to do the deep dive because I was like, when when Hunter mentioned to me in back channel, she's like, oh, it's the Nicholas brothers. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I think I know this. And she was like, I'm just so disappointed in you that you just <laughs> didn't know this. And I was like, no, I do. I just need to re like remember. And then it all came back to me after like a quick Wikipedia. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Bring in the, do bring in the noise, bring in the funk, like actually talked about these two in in the um in the cultural evolution of tap dance and so it makes sense that they're in this scene even though we talked a little last night about how the timing is a little off because they were a bit they were very young and performing in like the 30s and 40s so this is a bit later um but it but they did perform a lot at the apollo and um they're 
they're kind of famous for having been at the Apollo and they're famous for bringing flashy tap dancing to the mainstream. So, you know, like everything we kind of see on Broadway today, like kind of came from this era of tap dance. It wasn't like that really before. So they are pretty influential in terms of how um, tap is is consumed by our modern society you know where we see a lot of tap dancers on stage and it's very it's very flashy and like that's of course what they do in the scene so for me it was like a little bit geeky because i am a dancer and i like i do have a lot of respect for the um the history of tap dance so i thought it was cool that they included them and like let them do a whole a whole number um because it's actually pretty long they're on screen for a bit um but yeah, it. I thought it. I thought it was cool that they they included that. It it definitely makes sense um, that they would do that because they were very famous at the Apollo, as was Mobs Mabley. So you know, I I feel like they tried to do as much as they could, like make the Apollo feel like a night at the Apollo feel very authentic. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's my long winded deep dive tap. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, what did everybody think about um, Midge's performance? Did you think she went over the line with that? Oh, absolutely. But I don't think she was completely aware that she was crossing a line. Um, she just she's so unaware all the time as much as i love her i spend a lot of my time with her very upset with her because she is selfish and she has no filter and her mouth oftentimes gets her in so much trouble but i think um she wasn't aware that she was crossing a line. I don't think she did it on purpose or she was even aware of what she was doing. Like she said, I was at least two doors down, which was still too close to the truth. But for her, she killed that set and everybody loved it. And that, that was all that mattered, really. She doesn't fully realize what she's done. I, I think still, even after being fired. Yeah, she went, she got a little too personal and just like she got a little too personal when it came to um, Sophie and all those other people that got her in trouble. She didn't learn the first few times, you know. That's a big problem with Midge. She doesn't learn from her mistakes. That's one of her fatal flaws, I believe. What did you guys think about Benjamin coming to the diner and exploding like that? Do you think he had every right to do that? Heck yes. Yeah, and I'm I, glad I he did it. I can understand he was how why we, how why he was mad to be you know have a wedding being called off by a dear John letter, no explanation, um, and then all of a sudden the mom coming by trying to match them him up with somebody else. That's a little awkward. But Benjamin doesn't fully realize the whole situation. Midge didn't send her mother to set him up. Midge had no idea. Her well, mother feels guilty. I understand that, but yeah. it's just awkward that Rose would do that. Why would oh. she do that? <laughs> well, yeah. Rose and Midge are alike in that they're yes. both a little selfish about, you know, like whatever's happening to them is happening to everyone. And so that's, I think, the lens that we're supposed to view both of them is, you know, they both kind of can't, like Midge is such a great amalgamation of her parents because on the one hand, she's got Abe's like fierce intellect and um, 
individualism and and sort of like uh she she's not afraid to like go against the grain but she shares with her mother a sort of um uh the world revolves around me type of feeling you know and so when her mother is like when everything's happening with midge in the beginning her mother's kind of like oh my god what are you doing to us you know um without really putting a lot of emphasis on like what's happened to midge um so i i think it's really apt that she treats benjamin the exact same way like this is like he's he's just sort of the the pawn in all of this um you know, like he said, he he went away quietly. He accepted it. He didn't he didn't dwell. He didn't ask questions. He gave her the space that she requested. And now, you know, all he knows is that her mother is showing up at his workplace and that's super inappropriate. And she it doesn't even occur to, to Rose that it would be. And that's really interesting. So I think it's kind of great that he comes and gives Midge a piece of his mind, even though he's got all the details wrong. It kind of doesn't matter because he's been like placed in this kind of crappy situation and it's not his fault. Um, all he did was be a, a nice boyfriend and propose and and honestly go into that endeavor to be dumped and that sucks that he got dumped but you know even when that happened he went away and was like okay that's fine you get dumped like great um so i kind of feel like even though he was wrong about the details like all of this is so earned because midge midge i know she's bearing the brunt of her mo her mother's actions but it almost doesn't matter to me because she kind of did a crap thing by like dumping him that way yeah, I agree with Benjamin. She could she didn't even give him a chance. She didn't explain anything to him. She didn't ask, "Hey, you know, I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to do this." You know, she just broke it off, and I totally understand what totally understand where he's coming from. Yeah, and, and I, like I, well, I was just going to say like she just broke it off cuz she didn't love him. Like, you know, that's like really what it is. It's not even that she had to give him a chance or, or anything like that. She just knew in the moment that it wasn't the right situation. And so, you know, she didn't give him a chance and didn't hear him out. And, and like, I don't think it would have changed anything. For her. Well, I remember when she got the call from Shia Baldwin in the first place, she didn't think about anything else except for herself. Anyway, she didn't care that, you know, she's a mother of kids. What's going to happen with her kids. She didn't, she just said yes, automatically. She didn't like actually give it a second thought. And I think him coming in once again, it was necessary. This is the closure because we've all been wondering since then, is she going to run into him? Like, are we going to see him again? This, he slammed the door. Like, we won't see Benjamin again, I don't think. It was necessary for the story. I'll tell you one person, like, I loved at the very beginning, and now I'm growing weary of her, and she's just getting on my last damn nerve, is Susie. Like, I don't know if I can handle much more of Susie. I'm starting to hate her. Especially since she basically mismanaged, looks like she mismanaged the money. Oh, yeah. She lost all of Midge's money betting because she's addicted to gambling and I also heard that you guys kind of are starting to like Joel again because even though he was you know cheated on her he's been slowly redeeming himself stepping up for Midge you know when she needs him obviously Susie going to him to manage her money because she can't seem to not touch it. I mean, I'm always going to be a Joel apologist. I love him so much. He is my favorite character. And the reason he's my favorite character is because I think he has the most um, dynamic character arc. You know, like we kind of don't know ever if Joel's going to like make it right. You know what I mean? Like we, we kind of, we see him trying and failing sometimes 
and then trying and succeeding sometimes. And I kind of love that for a character because we get to keep learning from them, you know? And then, but like when it comes to Midge, like she, like we've said, like she's made this, this specific mistake, like, like three times, (laughs) you know, like she's just not learning how to be professional in this industry. She's not learning the, the business side of it in the way that she needs to, to survive in it and get ahead in it. She's just, she's saying like, you know, I said this last night, but the way she got into this business was physically stumbling into a club drunk, not, and saying whatever came into her mind. And so that she may not she's not drunk on stage anymore but she's still doing the i'm gonna say whatever comes to mind thing and that that hurts her career it hurts her um her success it hurt her friendships um it hurts her relationships you know like ironically the one relationship it hasn't really hurt is her friendship with joel because he gets it but it hurt her friendship with the girl at the at the department store for her wedding. It hurt her professional relationship to Susie Le- or to Sophie Lennon, who kind of like could have been someone who um, took her on tour with her. You know, like she could have become really famous on on Sophie Lennon's coattails, like absolutely. And now she's done it to Shy, who she considered a friend and who is also a, a professional powerhouse to have to have in her corner so she's really she's really done it this time because also shy is such a big star that you know um Susie is actually going to be blackballed for this and that sucks too because it's gonna help it's gonna hurt Susie's chances of like working with other people to get her on other tours or get her other other professional relationships so it's like Midge just kind of Midge could have learned this lesson like in season one. She just hasn't, and it sucks. And I kind of wonder like what that's gonna mean. Is she gonna finally? Is she's gonna finally like learn this lesson? Like she's kind of been given two more chances since that first, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like mistake, and she keeps like kind of failing up. But like at a certain point, it's not gonna work. Do you guys think that um, they're going to try to turn to Lenny Bruce again? Because, you know, Lenny Bruce has bailed her out before. I don't know. I hope we see Lenny more. I can't imagine us not seeing him more. But at what point is he going to be honest with her? Like... (laughs) She should have learned a less this lesson a long time ago. Well, you know, <clears throat> Lenny, he doesn't really. He'll say stuff. He'll break the rules too. It, he's a rule breaker. Oh yeah. And that is the kind of comic, like, I believe Midge is striving to be, <clears throat> because. When Lenny was on stage, he was Lenny. He didn't develop a stage persona or a character like Moms Mabley or Sophie Lennon. Or he got up on stage and he was himself and he spoke as himself. And that's what oftentimes got him in trouble because he was speaking his truth, his opinion, his belief. And that's why I got arrested and thrown in jail so much because that was just not acceptable during that time. But he broke down barriers. I mean, he is so incredibly important in the world of comedy. If it wasn't for him, the comedy we have now would be much different because if he wouldn't have done that, other comics just like he threw the door open for truth and opinion and to not have to be some kind of caricature of some character you developed and um if he wouldn't have done that none of these comics today would be doing what they're doing they may have gotten there eventually but not as quickly that's why i love him so much because he wasn't 
fake on stage. He was real. And I think that's what Midge wants to be because that is truly when she is most funny, when she's just riffing about her life and her opinions and her truth. But I don't think she's quite figured it out yet. And she has a big obstacle obstacle against her because she's a female something that Lenny didn't have going against him because it was okay for him to be like that you know it's more acceptable because he's a man she's a woman so and women were fully expected if you were going to be a comic you were like Lucille Ball or Moms Mabley or Sophie you were a caricature of some weird character you developed but I think that's what she wants yeah I I think she's trying to break a completely different door down which is like she's trying to be like Lenny but the reality is that female comics even today don't have the same like they they aren't they aren't awarded some of the um liberties the same way men are and if you listen to female t comics talk about it's still basically a boys club and it's tough and so we're talking about 1960 i mean it's gotta be it's an uphill battle but because midge is otherwise kind of privileged and like hasn't really had anything hard in her life happen she's kind of going into it with this plucky attitude of, of like it should work right and you know and it's not going to um sometimes for these reasons and so i don't know i think it's interesting i'll, I'll be interested to see in the next season like if she kind of comes to terms with that that will be our segue because i'm gonna go ahead and um I, we, there's lots of things we could talk about, but I know that um, Erin is opening her has her room open for a drop of Gilmore. So I'm going to go ahead and um, close it up right now because I don't want to run too much over on her event. But I will see you guys tonight so we can watch season four, episode one. Um, we're 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 uh, watching uh, both episodes, right? Um, so I'm going to go, um, let you guys go and I'm excited to see everybody's posts about their hats and their cocktails as we celebrate the season premiere with the Remarkus group and also with, um, the Marvelous Miss Maisel cast and crew on Twitter. So I will, um, can't wait to see you guys all there and don't forget to harvest. You got four more minutes and I will see you guys tonight. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great Bye -bye. afternoon. Thank you.